Welcome to the 34th Annual Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series presented by Bass Pro Shops and Mako Boats. The key to getting the most out of the seminar series is to listen to the small things, the subtle adjustments our faculty teams adhere to when the fishing might be tough or they're trying to target trophy game fish. That's what we call the gold nuggets of the seminar series. So come with me, let's get right to it and join, in progress, the Saltwater Sports International Seminar Series. Coming to you from the IGFA in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, it's the 34th Annual Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series, brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Mako Boats. Now, here's George Poveromo. Dolphin is one of the most popular offshore fish, regardless of where you fish along the continental U.S. It's a very easy fish to access in most cases. You could have fun catching school fish as well as the larger ones. And I'm very honored to be here with a very distinguished panel on experts who specialize in catching dolphin. We have the living legend himself, Captain Bouncer Smith, well over 50 years of charter fishing experience out of Miami. Harry Vernon III, out of the uh, South Florida area, very good in the Bahamas as well as the Keys. Then out of Isla Mirada, worldwide sportsman, Captain Ryan Wenzel, who fishes those waters thoroughly. People love dolphin, but they want to know where do you start to find them? Where can I locate dolphin? What are some of the tricks? Because once you get into school, Sometimes you can throw anything their way in to catch them. The hard part is trying to locate them. And early on, Bouncer, you start getting to spring, South Florida. As you look at the Gulf Stream itself, if you're in the Gulf of Mexico, you get the loop current. As that body of warm water rushes to the north in a northbound fashion, it carries the tropical fish associated with the warm water. And the wintertime, it tends to flow closer to our shores than it does in the summertime. So that being said, early on, do you tend to find the best dolphin action right on the edge of the Gulf Stream? Do you tend to find it more in the inshore waters or do you tend to find it farther into the stream itself? Early in the season, the coastal waters are cold or cool at, at least. And with that cooler water, the dolphin fish are very frequently right on the very edge of the Gulf Stream or even inshore of that all the way into green water. Uh, because the waters are temp nice, comfortable temperature, and they chase the bait fish out of the Gulf Stream into the shallower water. Then, as the coastal waters warm up, it pushes the dolphin further and further offshore. The strongest Gulf Stream current is in August, mm -hmm. and you can have a ripping edge in 90 feet of water off of Miami, but you'll still, in the heat of the summer, you're going to find those dolphin, they're going to be 20, 25 miles offshore, just because they're pursuing the cooler Gulf Stream water as opposed to the inshore coastal Exactly, water. and Ryan, it's the same deal in the Keys. You talk about catching fish closer in, and people think, well, you can't really put together a good catch of dolphin in 300 feet, but what, what's your take on this? So, uh, like what Bouncer's saying is true. As the, as the season goes on more into July and August, the fish do move further offshore, but early in the season, you know, May and June, we get a big push of slammers that come through early, and they come in real shallow, anywhere between 300 and 600 feet. So the early season fish tend to be in closer and there's usually some nice size ones mixed in. So the crux here is know what the Gulf Stream's doing, where the true edge is and its relationship to really decent offshore structure. It's a one-two punch combination. Now Harry, the other big thing, people said we gotta find weeds. We're gonna get on weeds and catch dolphin. That might determine whether you're successful or unsuccessful. Yeah, we, you know, when fortunately we're in close, our, our water column's in close. So you'll have several weed lines as, as you're heading offshore. If you're seeing real dark brown weed, there's nothing in it, there's no life, just keep on going, keep, keep heading east, get out a little further. You wanna find life, you wanna be able to see little flyers come up, you wanna be able to see all kinds of uh, little needlefish, ballyhoo, all kinds of stuff swimming in the water, puffers. That's when you start getting into a good, good weed line. That's what you wanna look for. All right, here's a game changer. And Sirius XM, the weather satellite people, have a subscriber service now called Fish Mapping. And one of the features is they could tell you where the weed lines are at. Now think of how crucial that would be. Now I have to say, out of South Florida, because of the proximity to land and the buildings on the reflection that they get from the satellite imagery, is it picks up around 20, 25 miles offshore of the South Florida coast. But you look at other areas of the Gulf of Mexico, mid-Atlantic and up north, it will mark where the weed lines are, which is pretty amazing. And the deal with that is they update every 24 hours. So you might ask, well, you have a 24-hour window. What's going to happen 
it, in 24 hours, that stream, the winds could move it, but they give you three days advanced progression to make a determination of where that weed line is going to be. So I think that's going to be a, a very big game changer to be able to pop this up now and see where the weed lines are. And uh, Harry, you and I, how, the trips we've done, radar to find the birds is, is another great it's, equalizer. It's huge. It's, it's, I, you know, you sit there, today technology with all the SEMRAD stuff that you have, it just, it's, it's almost like cheating today. And uh, you pull up your radar and uh, you're, you'll pick up bl blotches of birds and you'll see if they're moving. You'll see if they're moving north, south, which direction they're doing. And the radar is so strong today, it, it'll pick up three or four birds where it used to just, you wouldn't see those birds, you use your binoculars, but it's just, it's cheating. And then you'll see if there's another boat, which I've done before, I'm running offshore, I see a pot of birds, and all of a sudden I see another mark going across. I go, oh, that guy's got a radar too, so he's heading for that same batch of birds. So you gotta just punch it and speed up with your radar and get ahead of there. And sometimes you'll see different batches of birds and you can pick your, your, your deals. Right. Here's one I wanna bounce off of a uh, bouncer, pun intended on that one too, <laughs> and, and, and Ryan here, is you mark birds. Sometimes you see a lot of birds. And uh, Ryan, give me your take first. So I just try to look for a smaller cluster of birds because like you said, the bigger ones tend to be our tuna birds where you got some skipjacks and stuff hanging on them. And you know, we do get a certain time of year like it happened last year where for a little bit, those were the birds that were holding the dolphin. So it's always worth kind of checking it, you know, and seeing if that's what's going on right now. Yep. But you know, I try to look for, you know, anywhere from five to eight birds. Gotcha. And on that note, before we get to Bouncer, we're going to go to commercial break, but I know you're never short on words. <laughs> so we'll be right back after a word from our sponsors. The Saltwater Sportsman <laughs> National Seminar Series is brought to you by Simrad. Go with Simrad and go with confidence. And let the battle begin. Sirius XM Marine. Weather, fish mapping, and entertainment for anglers. Mercury Outboards. Go boldly. Angle. Portable fridge freezers and high performance coolers. George will be right back. Welcome back to the 34th Annual Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series from the IGFA in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Mako Boats. Let's get right back to George. Welcome back to the Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series and our topic of how to score more dolphin. And we left you on a cliffhanger about using radar to locate birds. We're going to turn it over to Bouncer now with the question being, is a lot of birds signify dolphin or a false run? Are fewer birds better when you mark them on the radar? Give me your take, Bouncer. One of the key things to look for on the birds, and, and as we've already heard repeatedly, small bunches are usually better. But another trick is, generally speaking, if the birds are traveling with the current, it's very small dolphin, blue runners, or tuna family members. The bigger dolphin and the best dolphin you really want to target the birds will be moving against the current. So off of Miami, birds going south are a good indication of good dolphin. Birds going north are just the opposite. You get to Key West, generally speaking, it's birds going west mean that they're on good dolphin, and birds going east are the less desirable birds. But I'll reiterate what was said that uh, you need to know what's going on from day to day. If you spot birds and a couple work in the area and you don't feel like that's a good trolling spot, one of the things that we do a lot is we spot troll. We'll put two baits out, drag them around that area and see if we can encounter uh, a lone dolphin, a big boar, a cow, or some school fish. So it's a quick way to drag some baits in the area, 15, 20 minutes, nothing happens, reel them up and continue on with your search before you have to deploy a whole entire big spread. And I'm gonna tell you a couple of points here real quick that I, I wanna make. Is dolphin, like any other fish, get very dialed in sometimes on the fish that they want. Small flyers. I've been out there where they've been pushing small flyers and your medium value aren't doing it. They won't even look at it. Sometimes they won't even look at a light pilchard. So what I've done is I've had some very small ballyhoo uh, in the cooler and I take these little small blue skirts over it and try to size them up to the flying fish, lighter leader, 50 pound test, in case you get dolphin that are on a selective feed. And Ryan, uh, your, your thoughts on, on colors real quickly out there. Um, well, I mean, you just kind of like, my favorite color is usually just blue with some pink on it for a small chugger head. Yep. I do really like trolling a ballyhoo behind the boat. Even if I'm heading up on a set, I'll just put one out behind the boat. Once I get into that set, I kind of just let it sink. And we've hooked quite a few big ones last summer just by on that sinking ballyhoo. 
We're not even paying attention, focus on the front. All of a sudden, it starts peeling off. That's excellent. Balancer, now you're grabbing uh, lures. You're making a big ruckus over there. What are you going to show us? Well, you were talking about putting out lures you could cover a lot of ground. Yes. And these are the first two type of lures I would go with. Mm -hmm. On my right, your left, is a small lure, very bright in color, and it'll catch your schoolies as well as a big one from time to time. This lure, much bigger, is going to tend to be knocked around by a smaller dolphin, but it's really going to appeal to the big one. And as you can see, it's a half blue and half white, which mimics the color of most uh, ballyhoo and flying fish in the Gulf Stream. So you got bright color and you got a darker subdued match the hatch color. Real quickly here, just tell me what pound test leader, what size hook? Uh, this lure, I would go with an 8-0 hook and a 50 or 60 pound Long shank cut. hook or short shank? Uh, preferably a long shank hook with one or two beads so that the bend of the hook is at the very bottom of the skirt right. and the point is just in the skirt. And a big one. This lure here, I would go with a, uh, if I was strictly dolphin fish, I might go as light as an 80 pound leader, but Dan and Dad want a 120 pound leader and I'd stack up beads so that again, just the point of the hook was just inside the skirt. And I, on this lure here, I'd be using probably a 9-0. Uh, these are J-hooks. Sure. Because they're trolling lures without any Exactly. Bait, so. And I'm going to speed this up because I want to get to a pretty interesting topic that scores a lot of big dolphin. But as of late, all the weeds make trolling a pain in the neck. I'll go to weedless ballyhoo. It's rigging your ballyhoo like the typical pin rig, but you're reversing the hook point back in, much like you would a freshwater bass worm cutting a very small skirt to go over the top to cover the head of the ballyhoo and the, any pin that you have. And you could drag these across the thickest of weeds, put a full spread out and still catch dolphin, but because the hook point is back in the bait, it's remarkable. And people think, well, you might not get the hookups because the hook point's in there. Nothing could be farther from the truth. You score it. It's very, very uh, important if you want to go ahead and troll around some of the heavy weeds as well. Real quickly, we mentioned spot trolling. Also, when you want to make a cast at dolphin and or drag a ballyhoo, you get excited, you put a ballyhoo on a spinner or, 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 and you're dragging it around, or you're going to make a cast. Sometimes you get all nervous, that hook or bait comes flying off the hook. Uh, VMC has a B-lock hook now. It's a cool thing. It has like a porcelain type stop that will stop the bait from falling off the hook. So if you get excited and you make a fast cast, it's going to hold it on. But the other cool thing in haste, whether you want to bridle a bait, which takes forever, this also prevents the hook point from turning around and going back in the bait by like around 90%. So keep an eye on that model hook for fast deployment. It's pretty, pretty cool. So uh, we're getting ready to jump out to commercial break, but I definitely want to talk about something that's a major, major deal that a lot of people don't do, and that is drifting deep for dolphin and it scores even during the heat of summer. We'll be right back. The Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series is brought to you by Rapala, your best shot at a world record. Suffix, always use the best line. VMC, your expert in hooks. Williamson Lures for the Pelagic Playground. Starbright, blending technology with performance since 1973. George will be right back. Welcome back to the 34th Annual Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series from the IGFA in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Mako Boats. Let's get right back to George. We're back to the Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series. The topic is dolphin. We discuss locating fish, spot trolling for them, uh, casting out for them. A rather unique uh, technique that really works well is fishing deep for dolphin. That is going on the drift and Ryan, I'm gonna come back over to you too because you start getting in those doldrums, July, August, that surface temperature heats up. A lot of these fish and bait remain deep. Yeah, that's true. And a lot of times you'll be running weed patch to weed patch or on a floater in that time of year and you won't see the school right on the surface. So what I like to do a lot is I like to drop down a bucktail while I'm in the tower. And you know, my, my deckhand's there casting with a belly hook live bait so it'll swim down and out. And I'll drop this down and Nine times out of 10, they'll raise up on just my jig and they'll follow it up from the depths. And that's how we, you know, locate the school. Pretty amazing too. And then uh, Harry, you and I, we, we've caught our share of deep oh, drifting for dolphin. Many, many times. Uh, I don't do a lot of the drifting, but I will troll in the summertime and I'll have a, a, a wire line, if not two wire lines with a big old 16 or 24 ounce cigar lead with a drone spoon down deep. And I can't tell me how many times in the summer 
down deep, way offshore, all of a sudden that wire line just starts going off and we crank it up and it's a dolphin. And all of a sudden a whole school of dolphin come up with, with that whole program that, that, and then you're going like way old school the wireline offshore and that yeah, drum but I'm, spoon now you're going I'm, way back in well, time i'm going back to our days but, <laughs> but but it still works to this day so <clears throat> I've, i have changed some of my techniques with the wireline and stuff like that but it still works to this day because it's down deep fish are deep you hook them and, and i'm telling i can't tell many times we brought oh it's a dolphin and all of a sudden your rigor bait goes down and all the other lures starting and it, it's just a very very productive deal to have something deep always Okay. Uh, offshore. I'm going to steal this time to jump into a, a really good technique and also going back to Sirius XM, the fish mapping feature, which is compatible with Simrad, which is great, been benefited by that. They have a 30 meter subsurface reading where they could tell you the water temperatures down to 90 feet. So here you go in the heat of summer and you might see a 90 degree temperature at the surface, but you might see down below it might drop a few degrees. So you could tell maybe where you want to position the bait. But what we do with that is I'll take a 20 pound test conventional outfit, tie a short bimini twist, and I'll tie in 40 feet of a uh, 30 or 40 pound test fluorocarbon leader. And from there, we'll put a hook at the end. Now the beauty of this is that you could fish a live bait, be it a pinfish or so, or even a fresh squid, hook it on the hook. And as you're letting that out and the double line comes off the tip, the bait is 40 feet out, you take a sinker, a 10 ounce sinker, on about 12 pound monofilament with a snap swivel. You open the snap and hang it on one leg of the short bimini twist and you leave the swivel open. That gives you the weight to lower the bait 100 feet, 130, 150 feet, wherever you want it, put the rods in the holder and just start just chunking with some surface baits. And it's amazing that that deep bait all of a sudden, that rod will bend and you're hooked up and you got a fish going. It's a really amazing deal. And we've taken dolphin up to 35, 36, 37 pounds that way perfect for heat of the summer. Bouncer, thoughts on fishing deep? Well, one of the things I'll mention, you know, it looked very counterproductive because we always think about covering a lot of ground looking for the dolphin fish. But one thing you want to bear in mind is the, if you stop on the edge of a, gulf, of a weed line and this, the bigger dolphin are traveling against the current, so they're moving against the current and you drift and you'll drift with the current. So your baits down deep and your baits on the surface are actually going to be interacting with all of those fish that are swimming against the current. Very, very effective. The one big problem is when you do that in the summertime, these sailfish and occasional blue marlin and wahoo and Don't forget the tuna, tuna fish, yeah. yellowfin <laughs> tunas yeah. included, they, they crash your party. A presentation of good live baits from the surface down to 100 feet and a fluorocarbon leader just can't be beat. And, and thinking of fuel savings on top of that, but plus your boat is acting as a piece of debris floating around out there. When you do do your drift, you're doing it on a big weed line, a big patch, or on a two currents, you know, coming together. I think that's your best spot when you want to do a, a drift. Don't just uh, well, be and I'll, out I'll the counter that. I'll, I'll, I've done this 30 miles out, finding a decent area, even with weeds. I'll go 30 miles out with no really super good bottom structure, but there's patches of weeds. You see some flyers. And you just take it easy and you chunk, free line some sardines at the top. You've got these two deep baits. It really works wonders. Now, Ryan, I want you to give me your thoughts as the season progresses. The keys get to be pretty good in August, September for their dolphin as well. When do you find yourself fishing farther offshore, maybe even deeper, if at all? So, like you said, later in July and August, the past few years has been even better than May and June. So the season down there has kind of gotten better later. And we'll be fishing, I mean, there's days in July and August where I'm on the sword ledge, you know, 30 plus miles out or even further, just looking for those weeds and those birds. And like you said, you know, want to line up on where that Gulf Stream is because a lot of times that's where the fish are going to congregate. The Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series is brought to you by Columbia Sportswear. Stay cool and protected while fishing. Calcutta Outdoors, hard working outdoor gear. JL Audio, ahead of the curve. ACR, building survival products since 1956. Florida Keys and Key West. Visit flakeys.com. George will be right back. Welcome back to the final installment of the 34th Annual Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series, brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Mako Boats. Let's get right back to George. You know, it's the run and gun deal. That, you know, you have all this electronic uh, information now at your disposal where weed lines should be, where the subsurface readings or the edge of their fronts. You're running your radar at a two mile interval to go out there to try to find birds. A lot of the run and gunning, it, it's a racing kind of a deal to get out there. And uh, 
fortunately, you got guys like Harry Vernon in your area. If they get a little bit of a lead start, they'll stop and they'll throw some uh, sort of sardine-soaked bread all up on the top and they'll keep going. So all these poor people will see all these birds on the radar and they run over to spot and they're trolling and they don't see anything. They spend a half hour there. Guys like him are way out there bailing a the dolphin already. So, and maybe it's just a thing of being in South Florida and Miami in particular, but. Uh, well, just remember fishing, when you stop and yeah. fish, you're gonna see more friends that you haven't seen in years. And also when you stop for more than five minutes out there, there's boats that come from every direction to find out how you're doing out there. Welcome to yeah, yeah, but I gotta tell you something, Harry. George taught me this a long time ago. If you're on a really good spot and you're getting fish on regular basis or in a big school, the first thing you do on outboard is take the engine cover off. Right. <laughs> and that way, nobody we'll will come, come near, near you. you. <laughs> All right. I think on that note, this is the perfect time to end this session before it really gets out of hand. I want to thank Bouncer, Harry Vernon, and Ryan Winslow for that session. And we'll be back with another Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series. Well, there you have it. This week's Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series. Now, adhering to Saltwater Sportsman Seminar Series tradition, you still have chances to win door price drawings. Simply go to nationalseminarseries.com, log on to the door prize page, just give us your name, phone number, and an email address, and at the conclusion of the airing of the series in December, we will draw for a number of excellent door prizes. Get right to it. We'll see you on the next episode of the Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series.